I have another story for you from the days of the Second World War. And uh, it has to do with the little country of Lithuania. You may not even know where Lithuania is. It's one of the Baltic states, not the Balkans, but the Baltic states. The Baltic Sea is the area between the north coast of Europe and the um, lands of Scandinavia. And it's on the eastern end, and um, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania border uh, the east shore of the Baltic Sea. Uh, Lithuania, in the 14th century, was the largest country in Europe, but it had been broken up long before the time of the Second World War. Well, it was under the control primarily of Russia at that time, at the time of, of the Second World War, but the Germans had, uh, in their blitzkrieg, had swept into Poland and would soon be into Lithuania. And many of the Jews who had escaped Poland, Poland had a very large Jewish population, and so did Lithuania. In fact, about half of the city dwellers in Lithuania were Jews, and they were trapped. And so there was a open-hearted Dutch consul, and uh, he determined that there was a way for them to escape and that was by taking the Trans-Siberian Railroad all across northern Russia and then to Japan. And then from Japan, uh, they could flee to other parts of the world. Now, this, of course, was before Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. And so uh, the problem was that the people needed to have uh, temporary visas to get into Japan. And uh, so at that point, there was a very unlikely hero. He was the Japanese consul general in Konis, uh, Lithuania. His name was Chayuni Sugihara. And uh, he decided that he should help these Jews. And when they asked why he did, he quoted this samurai maxim, even a hunter cannot kill a bird which flies to him for refuge. He said some of these people actually got down and kissed his shoes, weeping, and he couldn't turn them away. And so he began writing as fast as he could these visas for Jews to enter into Japan and from there to other parts of the world. It made me think of this verse when the Lord Jesus entered Capernaum and a centurion sent word came to see him and said, my servant is lying at home paralyzed. And Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion responded and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. You know, this is one of the themes throughout the New Testament. The man who was justified that Jesus spoke about going up to the temple and beat on his breast and said, I'm not worthy. God be merciful to me, the sinner. The story of the other brother who was offended at the way the father treated the prodigal. It's like, he doesn't deserve that. And this really was the charge that the Jewish leaders brought against Jesus, that he was offering what they considered to be an unfair diplomatic pass to get people into heaven. Those who weren't keeping the law, but he was offering them something for which they were not qualified. And this is exactly the message of the gospel. And this was the story of this dear man, that uh, these people didn't have their paperwork, they didn't have enough money, they didn't qualify on any points to get into Japan. But he started writing these, thousands of them. He would write as many in one day as normally would be written in a month. And he was just filling them out as fast as he could. And eventually, um, he was told several times to stop doing it. He just ignored. And this is really something in the Japanese culture that you would ignore the instructions of your superiors. But he carried on saying, um, I have to do this. It was estimated when he was honored by the Israeli government long after the war, it was estimated there were 100,000 people who were the 
the offspring of the people that he saved, maybe five to 6,000 Jews. In fact, when he was told to move on, he was simply putting the Japanese seal and his signature. And when they got to the train station, he was throwing them out the window as these desperate people were reaching out to grab them. And they would take them and make visas and, uh, and get into, into Japan and from there <laughs> travel on to other parts of the world. And as I thought about this and realized, these people did not qualify. The law said that they had to have a country to which they already had a visa to travel. Many of them did not. They had to have a passport. Many of them did not. They had to have so much money in order to get there. Many of them did not. And yet, though they were not qualified on any point, in grace, he provided a passport, a visa to get them to safety. And this is our Lord Jesus. We stand at the bar of God. We're disqualified on every point. And yet, here it is. I'll never forget being in the little city of Jaffa, of Yafo, right beside the metropolis of Tel Aviv on the Mediterranean coast, and seeing in the town of Yafo a little street that's named Chayuni Sugihara Street. And I thought to myself, it doesn't sound Hebrew to me. And in doing a little research, I discovered that this man is listed in the Avenue of Righteous Gentiles. There is a, a memorial to him at the Holocaust Memorial because he saved these thousands of Jewish people. And you know, this is the message of the gospel. None of us deserves it. We're all disqualified. And yet the grace of God reaches out to us and says, well, I'm going to give you a passport to heaven anyway. You don't deserve it. You can't afford it. And yet, by God's grace, we who were without hope and without God in the world were the very ones to whom he offered this wonderful plan of salvation. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift.